Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Robert Rivera with another episode of Who's On First. I have a special guest, Otis, and today we're going to be talking about wiffle ball. So Otis, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sounds good, and glad to be here. My name is Otis Burgos. I'm an Ocala resident and uh, started a wiffle ball league. Well, we're in the process of getting it started. We've had it for about two years now. Um, kind of came on, went on pause for a little bit, and now we're trying to start it back up, uh, getting some traction around town and whatnot. Um, and it's just a, you know, adult league. Well, actually 14 and up. I don't really care if they're, you know, not adults. We're trying to get some good people to come out, play wiffle ball, have a good time. And I love the game. I love baseball, but wiffle ball is really what hit tone for me, you know, growing up playing backyard baseball. It's, I mean, it's nothing better than that. So that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. So what's the league that you started? What's it called? Yeah. So our organization is called White Hot Wiffle. Uh, we have a website, whitehotwiffle.com, Facebook, Google, whatever. If you just search it up, you'll find us. So I just built finally our first official field in Equestrian Springs, Ocala. So the northern side of Ocala, we got a field up there, got a fence and everything. Pretty nice little spot we got. The way we play is basically like MLW. I'm sure most of your viewers, if they're, if they're into football, they've heard of MLW. It's basically the way they play uh, baseball, but with plastic bat and ball. How many teams you got? So uh, at the moment, we, we have six teams, but they're not filled. I set that up last year, uh, got all those logos. So I'm, I'm a, by trade, I'm a web designer and graphic designer, photographer. I do all that kind of stuff. So I was able to build all these things out for our organization and stuff. It's just a matter of getting the people to, you know, play and sign up and become, you know, aware that this is happening. Um, we're trying to start every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Uh, in our field in Ocala. This Sunday will be the first one. So hopefully if we just keep it going, more people will start coming and start coming in. Then we can fill those teams out and actually have a full-fledged league, you know, keeping stats and whatnot and have a World Series and everything. That's that's really the goal. And yeah, those teams are up. I mean, I will have my team, the Backyard Blazers, but it's just myself at the moment. You know, we have around 14 guys. But we, ha we don't have the consistency yet and the commitment to set up an official league. Let's go through the name. So we got we got Backyard Blazers. What else you got? So we got the Backyard Blazers, Coastal Cudas, Central Cyclones, Midwest Maverick, Retro Rebels, and the Bayou Bandits. Okay. The six teams. And, yeah. how, and how many guys are going to be on a team? So originally we had the rules set up to a uh, minimum of three players. So the way we play is you need to have a minimum of three people fielding. I'm sorry, a maximum of three people fielding. So a pitcher and two fielders, that's that's how we originally played. You can have up to six people in your team so they can all bat, but fielding, it can only be three at a time, including the pitcher. But we are currently doing some trial and errors, seeing if it's best to have uh, four fielders, so a pitcher and three fielders, just to make it a little more, I guess a little easier and more realistic to get outs at first, because we don't play pitcher's poison like backyard rule does. If right. you see the picture behind me, you know, right. the, the pitcher, they could throw the, that basically acts as first base, which is a, it's a, it's a, it's an okay rule. We just prefer not to play that way. So we're going to have to, you know, experiment on that and see if it's best to do four fielders because we do at the moment, we have a 90 degree field. So the bases I believe are 50 feet apart that we play with. So it could be a little challenging to get that ball. If you hit a ball with a left field to get that all the way to first base, you know, wiffle balls are, you know, they're light and the wing can take it pretty easily. Right. So we're testing that out uh, this Sunday. We're going to try that out, see if it's best to play with uh, four fielders or how to do pitchers poison with three players. It depends. Okay. All right. So it was a little bit of a trial and error now that we yeah. started a brand new baby company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now we got the field. So we were always playing in uh, in East Marion in uh, Silver Springs and that field was much smaller. So there wasn't really an issue with that. But now that we have our field and I did it 90 degrees, it seem, it's, it's a little bit difficult to get that ball all the way across the field if you hit it, you know, to the corner. So... Right. Either we, you know, make the field small, uh, smaller angle, or we just update the rules. You know, we're just gonna try it out and see see what happens. Okay, all right. What got you into into wiffle ball of all the things? I mean, you could. I'm sure there's men's adult leagues out there that you could probably play and stuff like that. What was yeah the fascination with wiffle ball? Yeah, so like I said, I mean, so I played baseball my life growing up. I played. I started when I was very young. Played all the way into high school. I love the game. It's my favorite sport, hands down. And growing up, I always, I, my, my cousin, he actually still plays baseball. He's playing college ball right now. He would come over and we would play backyard baseball. We actually never played wiffle ball, like with actual wiffle ball and bats. We always had our other little trinkets and whatnot, but basically is what we did. We played wiffle ball just with other equipment. Right. And it's just, I mean, it's just pure nostalgia for me. I love the game of baseball, but I don't particularly want to invest myself so much in playing, you know, baseball on, on that grand scale that it is. Right. Um, It's just, it's a bit much. And also, I mean, 
I love the game of baseball, but it could be pretty boring sometimes. You know, if you're if you're playing outfield or a position that doesn't get balls hit to you, you're just standing there, you know, for the whole inning. That happens all the time. I played, like I said, I played all my life. So I know what it's like. I love the game, but at this point, I'm not trying to go pro or anything. I'm just trying to have fun. So wiffle ball to me is like the best of both worlds. It's the game of baseball, but it's way more action packed, way less uh, investment into it. You don't, you know, it's not as uh, it's a, it's a much smaller scale, but it's just as fun, if not even more fun. I absolutely love the game. So that's how I got into it. Um, and I'm always the kind of guy I like to start things, um, even though even if they don't take off all the time, I love to start things, get things started in town. And I got three businesses of my own that I run. So this is just another thing that I like to do. Yeah, I mean, that's how I got into it. I mean, love of the game. I mean, when you get on that field and you're you're playing wiffle ball, I mean, how does it make you feel? Is it like a little kid again all of a sudden? Man, it's the best. We just played last night, not with my league. So there's actually another league in town that's starting up in Marion Oaks. So I went to play with them for the first time last night. And I remember dri just driving there. I was getting so excited, man, because I, like I said, when you love baseball, you love baseball. And I, I mean, I absolutely love it. And not being able to play like, you know, traditional baseball anymore it's not really at my speed anymore wiffle ball is like that's the escape that's something you can do with anybody you know just have a good time and i love it man i absolutely love getting on the field and playing with some guys and just hitting some dingers making some cool plays and the really cool thing about wiffle ball is pitching man pitching is so fascinating in this game because you can throw some some crazy stuff not it's not very easy but it is just so fun man it's I it's a blast i've seen some of these guys you watch some of these videos of these guys playing the ball is about you know, a foot and a half over your head. And then all of a sudden it just makes a hard left and boom, hits that. Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah. It's yeah. I got one person last night, uh, a three pitch strike. I was three pitches, a slider that she, it was actually a lady. She was at bat and uh, she was a righty and I'm a righty pitcher. So righty sliders against righty batters is next to impossible to hit because it looks like it's going to hit you. Comes right at you. And then it goes whoop, right into the strike zone. Right. Got it with a slider. Got it with a drop ball, and then I got it with a, a riser, which you know goes up, Straight down, up. and up. It was just, it was one, two, three. It was a, my best uh, at bat. I mean, a uh, pitch yet. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, really cool. Yeah, I, I had when I played wiffle ball, we had that box against the wall. I played in the Bronx, so we had the box against the wall. We had tape. We put tape up there, and uh, I had the rise ball that used to used to come in, and it was about it was about thigh high. But it would rise on you. Yeah, yeah. And then That's an awesome pitch. Straight, straight gas. It would just, it would just come, and it, it started maybe about chest high, and it just came straight, boom, and it was right at the bottom of the box. And then I had that little drop ball that just, it went straight, and then all of a sudden, the last minute, just, it yep. just, it just fell off the table. And <laughs> man, I can tell you, my cousins used to get so mad with me. Guys used to run the block. And they'd be like, what you doing to the ball? You're putting something on the ball. And I'm like, what am I putting into a wiffle ball? Like, man. And then you get the different grips, you know? You get the, yeah. put your fingers in the hole here. That's the fastball. You get the, you know, they get that one if you turn the, the ball upside down. So, I mean, yeah. what you, you turn the ball upside down to get that riser, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the general rule is wherever the holes are facing, the ball is going to go the opposite direction, generally oh. speaking. Um, unless you, unless you have a different, you know, if you twist your, if you deliver it, and with a twist, it's gonna, that's different. But if you're delivering straight, you know, like if you're a riser, I don't have a wiffle ball on me, but I should have got one. Holes facing down, and then you uh, you just wanna snap it straight so that the holes remain facing down while the ball's spinning, and it's gonna go up. It'll it'll start down and go up. Right. And then the drop ball is the exact opposite. You know, holes facing up, same thing. Usually, most people do it sidearm, that's how I throw it. And then just so that the holes stay up, and then it's just a, a sink. Really, right. really cool pitch. You know, and then the slider, same, you know, holes to the right, screwball holes to the left as a righty pitcher. Um, the only pitch I can't throw from the all from the pitches I just named is the screwball. I don't know why. Uh I have not been able to get it down. It's the exact opposite of a slider. So I and my slider is my best pitch, but I just can't get the screwball. I don't know why. It's a hard one. What's the craziest pitch you ever faced? The screwball. I mean, the screwball it's a weird pitch. It's because it's 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 unnatural. A slider makes sense because if you're again if you're a righty and you're throwing it, I don't know. It just makes sense that the ball can go from the right to the left. But if you're a righty and you throw a screwball, it's going from left to right. So it's it's a it's a I feel like it's a completely unnatural movement um, in terms of the ball coming to you know getting to you. So that pitch when somebody can throw that pitch well, it gets me every time. I'm like I don't even know I I don't know what to do with that. It's a it's a crazy pitch. I've only <laughs> seen one guy throw that though, and that was actually at this tournament. The picture behind me uh not that guy but 
it was in that tournament he was throwing screwballs and i was like man they got me like twice it was just crazy pitch what's the wildest play you've ever been involved in there were a couple of pretty nice plays in this tournament a couple uh robbed home runs i don't know that one i don't know i've had a couple cool plays here here and again but nothing I, nothing on top of my head that i can be like that yeah, that's that's like the play what are the oldest the oldest players you've seen on at some of these tournaments yeah, so we have an, actually we have an, um, somebody in our league. He's an old gentleman. He's in his uh, 50s. That's the oldest that I've seen at the moment. Um, last night in the group that we played with, there was a couple older people, but I don't think more than 50s. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, so when you see these guys getting up there to play, I mean, uh, how do they look? Are they back to like a 10-year-old kid? Yeah, for the most part, people, I think people go back to their roots. I'm, you know, baseball's America's pastime. It's deep, knee-deep in people's uh, nostalgia factor for a lot of people. And myself included so i think being able to step in a field even though, again it's a small scale but it's still it's still basically baseball you know it still feels like that the atmosphere is the same so i think that's what happens when you step on that you step into the home plate and it's just you feel like you're a kid again you know that's how i feel every time and it's just a blast man yeah so who's your favorite teams my favorite team is the red sox uh boston red sox i grew up uh i'm, I'm dominican and growing up my family loved the red sox manny ramirez pedro martinez that's those were those were their guys um so growing up i just gravitated towards them and to my favorite team ever since i don't particularly follow baseball much um every now i watch highlights every now and again but boston red sox are probably my favorite team they've been since i was a kid so who introduced you to baseball yeah my grandpa he uh he's still around today he's, he's down south in uh port st lucy my family he's a baseball nut man he wa that's all he watches is baseball all his life tv is baseball that's all he watches and he introduced it to me when i was a kid and i i loved it very very quickly i fell in love with the game and started playing um i don't know my camera turned off there that's all right. i started playing when i was around i want to say seven or eight around there i started in coach pitch in down in Miami, Florida, and played all the way into high school. You, the game today, I, I know you say you don't watch it very much, but I'm sure you're following all the changes and yeah. the pitch clock and uh, yeah. and the this. I mean, what what are your opinion of some of these these rules, these new rules coming in and out? So I don't know. There might be more rules that I'm aware of, but the pitch clock, I am I know about that rule, and I think I mean, again, I, I don't follow it much, so my opinion may be misinformed. But I think the pitch clock is a pretty good idea. I know that uh, baseball games can be very sporadic in terms of how long they can last. You know, it could be a two hour game or it could be a four hour game. And that's like pretty on average, that's just how games are. And it's because you can you can dilly dally for lack of a better word as pitchers and whatnot and timeouts and this and that, and it could just, it could just be long. And I think, so we just actually watched the game. I went to my first baseball game. It was a, I believe triple A, one of the minor league games in uh, Port St. Lucie in the Met stadium. And it was a, it was a pretty quick game. I think it was, I think it was just under two hours. And I remember thinking to myself, like, man, that was a that was a pretty fast game because I used to go to baseball games in Miami with my grandpa and they would last. I mean, we were there for like three or four hours around there. And I would just be like, man, it was a long time to sit and watch, you know, a game. So I think it's a good and a, a good idea. Um, I think it makes the game a little quicker and more entertaining for viewers and even for the, the players. And you don't have to be standing there doing nothing for so long because oftentimes you don't get the ball hit to you, like I said earlier. So I think it's a good a good choice uh by the you know the organization i'm not sure about any other rules though what so what do you think they should put a pitch clock on the in the wiffle ball i think that'll make the game faster <laughs> no i mean it, wiffle ball i mean it's if you're taking i mean wiffle ball is a game it's, it's a backyard game you know it's not it's nothing super serious but i think the best thing to do for wiffle ball is a radar a radar gun okay. um because it, it's it's no fun if you got a pitcher just absolutely annihilating it and nobody's hitting then it's no fun so MLW implemented that I think last year or the year before they added a pitch clock and at first I thought it was a pretty stupid idea but after watching like previous seasons it makes it makes a lot of sense because there were pitchers that were pitching 80 miles an hour and you're at a distance I think they played 38 feet which is like us right. and somebody ran the math I can't remember who I think it was um somebody on YouTube ran the math and uh I think it's a 70 mile an hour pitch in wiffle ball at that distance is the equivalent of a 90 90 mile an hour pitch in baseball so because of distance and you know time to reach you and stuff so right. it's 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 not easy especially if the ball's you know turning and sliding and screwing i mean it's it's not easy especially with a bat that's you know what two inches thick it's not very easy um so i, I think a pitch clock's a good idea so it, you know pitchers aren't throwing absolute gas and blowing batters left and right it's no fun yeah. it's fun if you get you know rallies going and whatnot I was, I was explaining to my son the other day, I said one of the hardest things to do in this world is hit a round ball with a round bat. 
Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching an interview with Deion Sanders, and they told him, you know, he played all kinds of sports when he was a kid. And they said, what was the hardest sport to play? He said baseball. You'd have to have some kind of special skill set sometimes to play wiffle ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lot hard. It's pretty hard to hit in wiffle ball. Like I said, the bats, you know, significantly smaller. I think it's even smaller than softball bats, you right. know, in terms of diameter. And if you got a pitcher that's, you know, throwing some nasty movement, I mean, you got to have, it's got to be perfect contact. Otherwise, you're going to hit, you know, little bloops or grounders and whatnot. Um, to hit a home run, you got to make, per you got to be perfectly in terms of contact. You know, lining up the ball perfectly with your bat. Otherwise, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not so, anywhere. it's a great game, man. But, and, you know, obviously you can play different skill levels and, you know, different competitive levels. But I think it's just, it's it's such a timeless game that you can play with anyone. Anyone that enjoys, you know, baseball or softball. It's just such a great, great game to play that requires much less of an investment and whatnot in terms of being able to play the game, setting up the game. It's It's just great. I love it. I think it's... I think it's just I think it's just as fun as baseball, if not more fun. Yeah, I'm going to lead you to a different question. It's about baseball. And it was something that was said during the Women's uh, College World Series. OK. And it was one of the young ladies. She said a win without God. Is just a win. And I see Interesting. you. I love Jesus hat. Yes, sir. A win without God is just a win. It's interesting. I'm not sure what she means by that. Uh, For me, I took it as, you know what? You could win or lose a baseball game, but at the end of the day, you still have your Lord and Savior that's okay. going to be there with you. No I got you. Because a win or loss, it's just a game at the end. Yeah. Of the yeah oh, I see what you mean. It's just a win. I see. Yeah, it's just a win. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, we're not taking anything from this earth with us, so... Win or lose, it's just a game. You know, obviously we all play to win. I'm a very competitive person by nature. I'm just, I like to play. I like to play my best, whatever I do. My wife tells me all the time when we first got married, she would always tell me like that it was so difficult for her to play games with me because I was always trying to win no matter what it was, you know? And I had to learn, I had to learn how to be, you know, more humble and understanding and nonchalant. Yeah. But I'm a competitive man, man. I, I just, I like to play games. I like to play to win. But again, at the end of the day, it's just a game and, you know, we're all going to die and we're not taking any of that with us. All we're taking with us is the relationships we make with people and you know what we did for the kingdom that's 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 what matters so i am trying to implement that in our group uh it is a uh christian organization not i'm not exclude i'm not making it exclusive only to christians that would be ridiculous right. but i am trying to keep it family friendly you know profan i want to keep profanity at the very very minimum um and it's also one of the rules uh believe it or not with the official wiffle brand the actual organization the people that make the wiffle balls if you want to be in good standing with them and partnership with them, which we are, um, that's one of their regulations There's no profanity and whatnot. So I respect that. I respect that a lot. And that's just something we apply into our league as well. The, the wiffle, the wiffle ball company. Yeah. The wiffle ball company. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine there that the, it was a Christian founder. I, I haven't looked into it, but I imagine that, that he was, otherwise it, that's pretty rare to see. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. So if somebody wants to get in contact with you, they want to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Yeah, the best thing to do is just to visit our website. I mean, whitehotwiffle.com, you'll find everything you need there. Our rule books there, which I update, you know, whenever this changes, the team names are there. Um, the sign up registration form is there. The waivers, there's two waivers that every player needs to sign. It's very simple, just a you know liability waiver. And um, you'll find the link to our Facebook groups, our con our communications group chat, everything, everything is on there. That's the best place I could send somebody is to our website. All the information is there. And if I want to sign up, let's say I want to join a team, how much would it be? So when we start a league, we'll have to figure out the cost for that. At the moment, everything's free. We're just playing for have fun. Unless people want to like have a like a prize pot when we do home run derbies, for example, it's up to people. If people want to get a prize pot, then everybody's got to pay like five bucks or something. And then winner gets, you know, whatever the prize pot okay. is. But other than that, it's free. You know, I'm not trying to make a buck out of this. I'm just trying to have fun. So the league will be uh, a paid thing because there's more expenses that, that come with that. Right. But I'll crunch the numbers and we'll figure it out then. But at the moment, I have no idea. You know, we're not there yet. All right. Ladies, gentlemen, uh, 14 and up. Anybody that wants to play some wiffle ball, want to have some fun on a Sunday night at 630, you get in contact with Otis. He's got some spots to fill in his teams. And it's white hot wiffle. Get on yes, there. Sir. Let's play some wiffle ball. Let's have fun and let's enjoy it. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Ocala and surrounding areas. We play in Ocala specifically, 
but I mean, we played around town. We played in Gainesville a couple times, uh, Bellevue a couple times, and Silver Springs. Um, so anywhere around the area, if you're willing to make the drive, we're more than happy to have you. So come on by. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Otis. Thank you for being on. And hopefully I get to see you Sunday. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, bring 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 some people, man. It'd be a great time. I think we're going to have a good crowd this Sunday. So bring some folks, man. I'll bring my camera equipment, too. We'll record the games. And okay. it'll just be great. We'll have a lot of fun. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Remember, don't forget about the merch. All the new merch is out. There's a lot of new stuff that came out. We'll take a look. There's going to be a link underneath. And thank you, Otis, for being on. Uh, good luck. I wish you uh, luck with your adventures. Anything I can do for you, let me know. Awesome, Robert. Appreciate it, man. Good to be on the show. God All bless right. you guys. Have a good one. All right, guys. Remember, as we always say on Who's On First, what do we say? Keep swinging. If you like the show, please do me a favor. Subscribe. Right? Right? You see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. It'll ding you when I put something else on, all right?